Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be going over one of the most annoying variations that you can face in the Dragons of Slain is Black. So after e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6 is the dragon, bishop e3, bishop g7, f3 begins the Yugoslav attack, knight c6, queen d2, castles kingside, and now we're going to face this super annoying move, this move pawn to g4. So if you like content like this and want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So the whole point of the move pawn to g4 is to prevent this equalizing maneuver pawn to d5. In fact, if black plays d5 right here, his position is going to be completely unsound after g5, knight h5, e takes d5, simply winning a pawn and black has no compensation. So why is this? Why is white playing this and not playing some other line? Like why is white just not castling queenside? Well, on Castle's queen side, of course, the move pawn to d5 is perfectly playable. Now, we used to think that two moves were playable here. We used to think d5 was playable and knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6 was playable. But then we discovered that white has this move king b1. And this is a critical idea to the whole position, and it's also a critical idea in this annoying move pawn to g4, which is here, we can't play queen a5 in one move. Black can't play queen a5 because this move knight d5 is very strong because when we take on d2, it is not with check. This move, knight takes e7, is with check. King h8, rook takes d2, and white is simply up a whole pawn. And again, white has a decisive advantage here. So since we can't play queen a5 in one move, black is forced to two-step that queen. Black has to play queen c7, h4, rook fc8, h5, and now finally we can play queen a5. We can meet knight d5 with queen d2, knight e7, king f8, and the king touches the knight. So our position is completely uh, sound in that respect. But it did take us an extra move to get the queen to the a5 square. And as it turns out, this is a very bad thing. This one extra move is all white needed to make black's position essentially unsound. Uh, when you have kings castled on opposite wings like you do in the dragon, typically all that matters is who gets their attack in first. And in this case, it's going to be white. White will land this attack first because of this one tempo that black lost by having to two-step his queen from c7 to a5. And we, of course, know that now, and that's part of the reason that when we face the castle's queenside line, the move d5 has completely taken over in the theory at this point. And that is, of course, the reason why the move pawn to g4 is very annoying, because it has completely prevented the only equalizing maneuver that a lot of players are familiar with anymore, which is needing to play pawn to d5. Because when white plays g4, we have to revert back to the idea of knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6. But we also have to be very careful about exactly how we revert back to that idea of knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6. Because if we play the instinctual way of doing it, which is just doing it right away, knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6, we will of course be completely fine if they castle queenside, because we can just play queen a5 in one go and everything is great. So that's natural instinct. We get to play queen a5 in one go. Our position is completely sound because we didn't lose that tempo. If knight d5, we're going to have either queen d2 or queen a2, and black's position is great. And after king b1, we're going to play rook fc8, and once we get the rook out of the way, our position is completely sound because after knight d5, queen d2, knight e7, we get to play king f8, and the king touches the knight, and that's a critical idea here. Everything is fine. So here's the whole point. If we play knight d4, bishop d4, bishop d6, they're not going to castle queenside. Instead, it turns out that it's totally acceptable for white to simply play pawn h4 and keep his king in the middle of the board indefinitely. And with the normal plan in this position for black with queen a5, rook fc8, if white just continues with moves like h5 and a3 and eventually b4, kicking that queen away from the a5 square, it turns out that white actually has a decisive advantage in this position. There's no really great way for black to continue playing his position here. And the main reason for that is it's very difficult for black to counter with d5. So white can actually conduct a wing attack with his king just kind of hanging out in the middle of the board. And this is supposed to be major advantage white. So how do we play against this move? Uh, pawn to g4. Well, we could try something wacky. We could sacrifice against it. Uh, this was actually played in Mamanjara versus Chapirnov, and Chapirnov actually won in Wiccansy in 2005 with the black pieces. But that was more luck than skill. He got kind of lucky that Mamanjarov played a little bit inaccurately. Uh, after f takes g5, knight, knight g4, uh, 
uh, Mom and Jaroff played bishop g1, and of course this does give black some compensation, because after e6, h4, h5, it's very difficult for white to ever castle queenside, so no matter what, black will have some kind of compensation here. But of course, bishop g1 isn't an obligatory move. Uh, white could actually give up his dark toward bishop. He could play knight to b3, and then after knight e3, queen e3, uh, there's apparently nothing preventing white from eventually castling, consolidating his position, and just being up a piece. And the handful of times that this has been played, white has done incredibly well and just gone on to win from here very easily. So this sacrifice, probably not the way to go. Instead, we'll need to play this knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6 line, but we have to be careful about how we play the move order. We have to play bishop e6. And this is the main move that everybody's playing. This is the main move that all the top players are playing, that all the top grandmasters have tried when they play this with the black pieces. So again, the primary idea here is we're going to meet Castle's queen side with knight d4, bishop d4, queen a5, and again, yay, our position is completely sound, we gained that tempo, and everything is good. So what happens if they do something else? Well, of course they're going to do something else. They're not just going to castle queen side and make us happy. Uh, what are the options? Well, they could play h4, like they did in that other line. Uh, this was actually played in a game recently. This was played in Carlson versus uh, Ferugia, played on Lee Chess in 2021. Now, what's interesting is Ferugia didn't play the respected line in that game. He played something a little bit more interesting. Uh, against h4, he played this move pawn to h5, and then after knight e6, fe6, we have gh5, knight h5, castles queenside, queen a5, rich e1, king h7, and we just ended up with this absolute mess of a position uh, that honestly the computers have a really hard time assessing. I'm not sure what the overall assessment is, but Carlson did go on to win the game, and um, I don't totally trust the position for black. I think probably black's position is definitely on the edge of unsound. Uh, it's very close to falling apart, but it's it's certainly an interesting position and it's a very interesting way to go. Now, I think what's a little bit better against h4 is just to kind of follow the general principles of the position and just immediately strike in the middle. Uh, this move pawn to d5 is quite a bit more respected. It's just striking in the middle of the board. Uh, there's a lot of games that have actually continued with white playing this move pawn to e5 and then knight takes e5, and of course this is the whole point. And we have at least one game here that continued with h5, and then black had tons and tons of compensation in Azara versus Mista, uh, played in the Czech Republic, which ended in a win for black uh, when he just played the move knight takes f3 in this position. Knight takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop g4, and black has plenty of compensation for the sacrificed material um, in the form of just having a strong center and the fact that he's broken up all of white's pawns. It's interesting to note that it was also... Uh, possible to sacrifice with bishop to g4, fg4, knight on e to g4, and this also would have been enough compensation for the material. In fact, the computer gives this as just slight edge black, uh, so black's actually just doing a little bit better here. Uh, so d5 is what I lean towards against a move like pawn to h4. So what do we do against uh, the other kind of obvious move here? What do we do against this move, knight e6? This is, of course, the move that everybody plays. This is the move that you're going to face. Even when you're playing amateurs, this is the move that instinctually they play because they want to double your pawns. And it's probably the hardest move to face, and it's the hardest move to get right with black because... It's still a dragon, and tempos still matter a whole lot. So, of course, after knight e6, you need to play f e6, and you bring your pawn to the center of the board, and generally speaking, that's a good thing. So, the hard time that I have with this position is even after, like, a super direct attacking move, like bishop c4, uh, my instincts are to find a home for all of my pieces that make sense. So my instincts are, well, the queen definitely belongs on d7 because it connects the rooks. The knight belongs on e5 because look at that outpost. It's a really cool outpost. And of course, my other rook belongs on an open file. And that makes me feel happy. I would think this makes all my pieces happy. I have two rooks on two open files. I have my knight on a strong central outpost and my queen is out of the way. And of course, if I set my pieces up like this, it is more than likely absolutely wrong every single time to do it this way. And that's just because this is a dragon. Uh, it's it's all about tempo. We cannot afford to lose tempo. So nine times out of ten against any line, so against like knight e6, fe6, bishop c4, the correct move in these types of positions is to 
do a multi-purpose move. It's this move queen c8. So queen c8 is really the critical idea that you have to remember in these lines. You play queen c8 and you're defending the pawn, but you're also putting something on the c file. And this will help you maneuver your knight to the c file if you need to, trade it off by getting your knight to c4, etc. Or doing whatever you need to do. In this case, putting a little bit of pressure on the c4 bishop. So for example, after bishop b3, black is just going to play knight to a5, and we're going to get rid of that light squared bishop. After castle's queenside, we get rid of the light squared bishop, we take the pressure off of e6, and then we're going to maneuver this knight back to d7, uh, rook on d to f1 to defend the f pawn that we just attacked, and then we're going to play a5. And it turns out that black is doing a-ok -okay here. Black might even be a little bit better already. Uh, this was actually played in Zachenko versus Tukov, uh, played in 2006, and that game continued bishop h6, bishop h6, queen h6, queen c5, h4, knight to e5, h5, and then here's a really cool maneuver that just shut everything down. Black played this move knight f7, kicking the queen out, the queen retreated, and then g5 shut down the entire king side, which basically meant that at this point moving forward, black was getting a free roll against the white king. Black was just going to be able to attack the queen side with impunity without having to worry about getting attacked on his king side because he just closed it off. So bishop c4, this direct attempt, is going to be met with this move uh, queen to c8. This is a really critical idea. So if we go back, what are some other things after knight e6, f e6 that they can play? Well, they can try h4, and again, if h4 and they haven't castled queenside, we should strike in the middle with d5. This is uh, considered slight edge black. So we have d5, g5, and then d4 was actually played in Mamadov versus Cantor, played in Russia in 2019. That game continued gf6, bishop f6, castles queenside, uh, d takes uh, c3, queen takes d8, takes on b2, king b1, rook takes, bishop c4, takes, takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, king g7, and quite obviously uh, black went on to win from here. Black is up several pawns, and black has a great position. So black was doing very good uh, in that particular line. So h4 is not very menacing. So what move do top players play? Well, they play castle's queenside. So castle's queenside is kind of the main move, and then we're going to have knight e5, bishop e2. So now again, the correct idea is to play this move queen to c8. We need to play this multi-purpose move. We can't afford to lose tempo. And again, to my eyes, it seems super logical to play a move like rook c8, but this idea is apparently wrong. Although it was tried in Ponomaria versus Rajabov, uh, played in Minsk back in, you know, 2010. But the problem with it is this move knight b5, a6, knight d4, queen d7. And again, to my mind, this looks like everything is in the right spot. Uh, king b1, and then Rajabov played d5. And the position was certainly very unclear, but... All of the complications seem to favor white when you look at this under a microscope. So it looks like these positions are not very good for black, and it looks like these positions are pretty good for white. So instead of wasting all those tempo to get your pieces to seemingly what look like the perfect squares, it is apparently far better to just play the smooth queen c8 and just not waste any time. So then after h4, we're going to play knight fd7, putting pressure on f3, pawn to f4, knight c4, bishop c4, queen c4, and we're following another game here. Uh, we're following Nakamura versus Ray Robson, played in St. Louis back in 2012. And this game actually ended really well for Nakamura. Nakamura ended up winning with the white pieces after this move pawn to e5. But that's mostly because Ray Robson made a mistake right here. He played the very natural looking move uh, knight to b6, which again is a move that's very natural to my eyes. Take the knight off of the file where it's in trouble, move it to a square that attacks the middle of the board. How could this possibly be wrong? Well, it turns out it just is. And again, it's wrong for all the reasons that moves are ever wrong in the dragon. It's wrong because white's attack simply lands first. Uh, Nakamura continued with h5, uh, d takes e5, uh, h takes g6, and basically white's attack just landed first, and uh, black ended up losing the game. So what was black supposed to do instead of knight b6? Well, apparently the correct move is just simply rook a to d8. And this is the move you're going to have to play if you want to get the theory right in this position. So the whole point being is that we're maintaining this knight on d7, which maintains pressure on the e5 square. So we are threatening to play d takes e5. 
So if they play the natural uh, e takes d6, we simply play e takes d6, and of course the pawn on d6 is not hanging to queen d6 because the move bishop c3, bc3, queen a2 is simply advantage black, and uh, black is doing great here. Uh, this is slight edge black all day long. So they would have to leave that pawn on d6, and of course black's position is perfectly acceptable here. Now that's not the path that Nakamura Robson went down, but this is the path that people will have to go down in the future with the black pieces if they want to achieve something close to equality, uh, which that's what this position is. It's something close to equality uh, for black. So anyways, uh, that is how you face uh, the most annoying move uh, that you have to face uh, within the dragon. Uh, that is how you're going to face this move uh, pawn to uh, g4. Aimed against the move pawn to d5, you're going to have to play this early bishop e6, and then you're just going to have to remember all of these lines and try to get to an equal position. Uh, for the most part, it's a super annoying uh, line to face, this move pawn to g4, and for the most part, if white plays everything correctly, white is going to have some sort of slight edge in these positions, but if you play the position properly, uh, you shouldn't end up with a lost game, and you should be totally fine. So I hope you found this video helpful, I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.